Hello, everyone. Sorry. Okay. Um, we're going to be playing, of course, War in the East 2 um, here. Thank you, everyone, um, for showing up. Now, we're not going to have time to play a major campaign. I This is not, I don't believe, going to be a, a long ongoing series with Slytherin. So we're going to be playing the um, Road to Leningrad. Um, and I'm going to use this to talk about um, uh, some of my ideas on the overall um, war strategy for the invasion of the Soviet Union. And I hope to get input from the chat um, while doing so. Um, so even if you're not terribly interested in War in the East 2 as a game, you probably still want to maybe hang around for some of the, the chat and ideas. Um, what's going on here? Maybe a major campaign on YouTube channel, perhaps. Possibly, Arno. Um, it all comes down to enough viewers. Okay, well, we don't need this at start here, particularly. And as I was saying, there's a lot of depth and nuance to this game. There are news events. Now, this is just starting situation report here. Um, but as you, you go on and particularly playing the campaign, it tells you what's going on in the rest of the world and does have an impact. So do pay attention to that more so with that. Now, also with units like this here, um, we can see they, they do uh what do they go away um no well, because we're um we'll probably not click here um let's see um what is it details it goes down yes this is what it's looking for details down to you know um stugs um flat guns the 222 armored cars how many of them are already damaged in these units so this is a lot of details uh, that you can get into playing and again we're not having time so we're not going to pay attention to that for this playthrough also air campaign is important I've gone through setting up um, the air missions and all of that it takes a lot of time and if you don't want to do that for your campaign and again we're not doing that for this one we can just put it on AI so that way um, we can keep things going reasonably good with the air and we don't have to do it so we're going to execute the air missions that the ai is going to do and you can see them all sort of happening here and we can see some of the losses and whatnot and you, now setting up the air missions you need to say set up um uh, altitudes in which they are operating at so if you set them low you can have um, a lot of damage because of say flat guns over the targets but they will also do a lot of damage or you can set them at high some of the operations at higher altitudes you'll take no damage from flat guns but they may not do much damage to the targets so it can vary a lot of a lot of um, things that can be done and so we can really dig in. Hello Plastic Gangsta and everyone else of course. It was you and this match I was watching the other day wasn't it? We spent the entire session discussing if you should or should not retain my cop. Was that you? No I think that was somebody else Pl Plastic Gangster. I am XTRG or somebody else. I not played this on Slytherin before. I played it for myself. Um, I have a few episodes, but wasn't this. Now, okay, so my goal for the first turn is to take Riga. We want to take Riga turn one. So that's a long ways up in there to get there. Now, with a game like this, and the way it's structured, it's best to start out using the units the furthest back from the front and then move forward um, from it. Now, just again, some more explanation. The number on the left here is the approximate attack strength for this unit. 
and uh, the number on the right is its movement distance. Um, and we can see or points and it, it, it's not, it's more like action points, shall we say. Um, I guess it's maybe technically what it is. And different terrain, different obstacles will deal with this now. But when you're looking at the enemy's force, this is where, so where I bring this up, the number on the left here is its att approximate attack strength. The number on the right is its approximate defensive strength. And that's important to keep in mind for when you're, you're doing to attack. And we have to let lo them. Merry Christmas, Plastic Gangsta. And so, um, oh, I like to have interesting discussions with viewers. That's, that is why I like doing this stuff live, because I also like doing it, you know, pre-recording stuff as well. Um, but to me, that's a, a different sort of um, exercise. So I like um, uh, live interaction with viewers. So we're going to, and we need to also secure supply lines. And now we can see here, we can look at this whole front line. Now there's only two stacks here and here that are reasonably strongly defended. I like to, with games like this, because it's not a simultaneous action, obviously. Um, more realistically, obviously, you you would you wouldn't move one counter and get it resolved. They would all you would you know write orders, if you will, and then they would all go you know hour by hour or whatever as you're moving along. But since this is the game we have, we're going to play it. So I like to move on a on a situation like this, sort of from the outsides in um, to the action, and then we'll get into some of the critical stuff here. So we're going to start out by moving him to here. He'll march up. And you also, now, we're going to, all, I'm going to move him up to here to keep him. We want to keep the HQs for the units um, within command operating range, and that will give bonuses to their operation. So keep that in mind as you do it. I don't think they can get... Okay, um, well, they can get up here. Yeah, actually, we will. This is a security element. They are not very strong indeed, but they're strong enough to deal with that. And so um, we're going to do that with him. Now here... Gets pushed back to here. Now I want to switch back to this security unit three. Okay, it should have enough for one more attack. Okay, good. So that the field artillery battalion has surrendered. You'll want to use these security units much more um, and it, for you know uh, anti-partisan and supply line. All right, so we're going to come up to here with this guy here. And looking here, we can see sort of right here when I'm over this at the attack versus defense. Now, this is not a good um, uh, ratio. So what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and come over here for a deliberate attack. And we're going to include this other division who's... No, actually, you know, let's see. What do we have down here? We're going to move these guys up. So now we're going to do deliberate. Okay. Okay. Um, which one? Okay, the fourteenth. We want to. We want to use that one, and that one for deliberate attack. Now we're thirty-seven. Five. So we want to keep going. Can you do a naval landing in Riga? Uh, that no. We, this um, this is very much a historically based um, campaign, and we don't have um, enough landing ships set up here. We do have some, uh, but I don't know here because we can hover over this. 
No, I think we're just air, we're just seeing the air base here, even though there is a port. There is supply via the sea, and so we're not going to do any navels. Okay, so we got that cleared. And we're pushing up with that. Um, yeah, we'll just do that. Okay, so we sort of cleared out that area there. Now, um, we're going to move this security force up here. Might as well use them. Okay, and we're going to also move up the HQ for it. That is not a good attack ratio, and so, but we can just move, use them to secure the, the, the area here. And so I'm going to use this guy here, and we're going to push right along. And this gray line is our area of operation. Okay, so a little bit about this. Um, this is Army Group North. We are under the command of Ritter von Lieb. Yes, there he is. I believe that, it, yeah. Wilhelm Ritter von Lieb. Um, he was a Bavarian officer during World War I, um, fought mostly on the Eastern Front in World War I, sort of known for some of his um, uh, sieges during um, World War One, so interesting guy. Now, what I want to sort of talk about is, and I like I like those of you who know me understand that I like these games um, because they're lessons from and about history, not just like a chess match or who can. Um, you know, beat the game. Yes. Typical. Okay, he got Ritter from um, from World War I. Uh, I think he was already a Vaughn. Uh, he got Ritter, uh, and yes, Ritter um, most uh, literally translated into English means writer, but yes, it's um, as a type of knight. Um, you know, word for, for night. Uh, he got that. I forget what one of the, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, shall we say the Kaiserreich's era uh, awards. He got one of them during World War One that um, was an, included an entitlement to nobility. And uh, so he adds Ritter to, or that, or that adds Ritter to his, his name for, yeah, for the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, so we can move. That would be better here because we'll have the strength and we can hit that. Okay, push that back a little bit. Okay, the pro the big problem, the big picture here with this war. And we sort of what we we know wait, sorry, we know the goals uh well the goal of Barbarossa, of course, was to defeat the Soviet Union. It's, I would say it's um, primary strategical goal was to take Moscow. Now, let's zoom out here, and you know I like to talk about this, and don't worry, we're going to play. <laughs> As you can see, it, it's almost endless that there's, you know, defense in depth. Give up territory, um, you know, as a defense. So you can, and then, yes, and here's Moscow. So you can endlessly push back in this type of environment. And we can see whether it's, you know, Barbarossa or Napoleon's invasion or others. You know, going going back to sort of this part over here, 
um, with Alexander the Great pushing up against um, horse peoples of various tribes, I forget which ones at the time, during his invasion, it's sort of an endless push into there. And so I would, I could argue, I'm not saying this is my definitive idea that this is best, but I would argue the idea of attacking an enemy that has, for a practical sense, the ability to continually to retreat from your attacks, and the deeper you get into the enemy territories, the worse off it is for you because it's such a scale that supply and other elements comes into um, the, uh, the depth of it. So now, if the enemy has is all of its army you know on the border and you defeat that army well then it doesn't maybe matter so much but that's not the case the germans knew enough to know that that wasn't the case that it was all you know just stuck on the border or something like that so i would argue that pushing against goals that are um illusionary you know, get to this river, get to the next river, the river next to, the, you know, get to there, um, is um, not the, a good way to do it. Like for the Napoleonic invasion, I've often thought, because there was, you know, the Grand Armée of Napoleon that goes to Moscow, but there's also, if you will, an army group north, partially made up of Spaniards, um, some of the Spanish Royal Army, uh, and some Prussians and some others, uh, some cli other s client states and semi-client states of Napoleon. And there was also sort of a southern um, push as well. Had they um, had something called, um, back in the Napoleonic era, I know they really didn't have much of these back there, but had they had something called like a calendar, and they knew that winter's coming, and with winter, um, it gets cold and snowy in the Soviet Union and made plans for um, wintering up, uh, marching in no matter, no matter how good or bad you do, marching in, make sure that you are going to deliver a winter's worth of supplies, you know, plus a little bit extra to get you to the start of spring, and build a winter barracks you know and do that in stages as you moved into the soviet union probably would have done napoleon a great deal of good um but to get back to this you know as opposed to constantly he's being pushed and ends up in he ends up in, in a burning moscow and um with a starving army had the germans not focused on moscow had they focused on a northern and southern objectives because both of these are geographically definable if you focused hard and take leningrad you focused hard and cut off at least the murmansk if not getting to archangel but cut off the Mur murmansk railway connection had you focused hard and which they did but um were able to get but focused hard and get um, a lot of the Black Sea coast, the Sea of Azov, maybe not all the way down into here, but focus hard into getting here, and which will allow you to um, use seaborne supplies, not just landborne supplies, to to supply yourself. That first year, an objective that would have then allowed uh, potentially, um, you know, a big pincer movement against Moscow, one from the north and one from the south, as well as pushing up here and, and creating a big pocket. So um, that's why, you know, again, I always have to say warfare is a political act. Politics comes into it. I don't mean, you know, political parties. I mean political will to fight the war. So yes, taking the capital, giving the impression to the the people, the army, everything else that all is lost, it's best to give up. That is an important element. I agree. And I'm not saying that what I'm saying is the best way to go, but it is a 
significantly good objectives that take into account the realism of the situation because you can definitely still have an army group center that is still pushing as hard as the forces that are given that are practical to take and hold as much um, of the objectives as they can but keeping the the wings of your advance strong in its ability i think to reach moscow was um ideologically driven goal whereas the south was about strategic resources hello Kakem, uh, I think you're absolutely right. There's a lot of ideology going on in all of this, um, and that is important to understand. Napoleon expected to have um, win uh, Winter Guard in Moscow, but it burnt. Yeah, as you say. And, and you know, they did fight the Battle of Borodino before. He kept thinking all he had to do was defeat. Well, Napoleon comes from the sort of, you know, Western or Central European view that... The country gives up if it can't hold its capital. It's willing to sign some sort of, um, you know, even if its army is still intact, um, willing to sign some sort of peace agreement or cease fire or whatever, you know, trade some, you know, territory, you know, you know, give up some of its territory for continued existence or whatever. So he thinks getting that the Moscow must be defended, and if the the, the Russians can't defend Moscow. They will, they'll be willing to, you know, have do a deal. Well, that wasn't the case, obviously. And what's Plastic Gangsta saying here? There was a certain element of desperation on the part of the Wehrmacht. Their momentum was waning, and they had not planned for war beyond 41. They had bogged down and were not making progress uh, as they expected. So they chose to throw everything at Moscow, Operation Typhoon, with the expectation that Moscow would trigger the collapse of the Soviet regime, or at least the fall of Stalin, perhaps. Yes. Oh, there's a lot of... Oh, I'm not saying that they're. I'm not saying they didn't have good reason to do what they were doing. Uh, I'm not saying that they were stupid idiots or any. The opposite, they weren't. Um, I'm just trying to look at this as a strategical problem here. That yes, and especially when we're talking about the British before the Americans really get into the the war, lend lease is not. A majorly significant factor. It's a, it's a minor factor for the Soviets. Now, once the Americans are into the war and are really sending lend lease, that becomes a major factor for the Soviets. And we're, I'm not going to get into all the details, but it really does help. But for me in the North here, okay, the Finns, we can look back on, in hindsight on history and say the Finns did the right thing of not leaving their um, pre 1939 or whatever. Um, borders, you know, in their continuation war and not pushing on Leningrad because the Germans were doomed to lose and had they take, had they gone out of their border areas, they probably would have been um, stomped by the Soviet Union and turned into a Soviet Socialist Republic. So they did the right thing for Finland. Absolutely. Mannerheim did the right thing for Finland. I have great respect for Mannerheim. Um, he did the right thing for there. But for the strategic goals of defeating the Soviet Union, it was the wrong call. The Finns should have pushed hard from the north. But had the Germans, instead of besieging Leningrad, in my opinion, you know, at least conquered all the way up to here, you know, taken all this out and connected through Finland, used this as a supply port, um, though Hitler was sort of somewhat for raising the city and destroying it. Had they had that as a supply port as opposed to an end of the supply chain problem, um, you I do believe you could have hold the North much more securely with much less force. So as the war continues on, you could have had more divisions facing, shall we say, the, the central front as opposed to this northern front, and it would have secured things. And then a you know more expeditionary force or whatever to strike out across this territory with the goal because again you can't supply it well but the goal of just keeping this rail line cut while the Germans, which they did do some but um, pushed a little bit harder up here in Murmansk to cut that off that would have um, I think been strategically significant okay let's get back to playing here but so we're gonna keep talking about this but so we're doing pretty good here we've got this push back to here now we want to come grab Let's see, yes, this unit here, 16 action points. We're going to come right 
It's going to be the end of our operations if we go there. And now we'll just fall back. I think we're going to use it closer to the front unit. But we're going to come here. We're going to hit that. Okay, that's not very good. Um, odds. Let's see, do we have... No, those are just HQ stacked up there. Okay. We're going to move up to here. Now, this unit and... That unit minus this one. And we're going to do a deliberate attack there. I don't want to, you know, push weakly on some of these units. I want to make sure that we take them down. Right, so now we have pushed back all of the units on this side of this flank here, of this core. And in this game, I do appreciate very much, and you, you should too, rail links for supplies. It won't matter so much for the first few turns, but in the long term, it will matter like it did historically, and you want to keep your forces up there. Okay, so that's out. that unit there is out of command and control because um, it has the red. And it still should be in by now, I don't know. Right. Now, so what we can do here is, well, uh, come up to here. And we're going to attack there. Let's push them back, routed. And we're going to use our last bit of movement to secure there. So you can see we're coming up around here. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to sort of do something similar here. They're going to come up to here. We're going to use this to attack here. Clear that away. This is a little bit stronger. I want to attack the stronger units while I'm still this. Using Flow Gamer. I don't know. Um, is that a mod? Then no, I don't know F O W. Oh, Fog of War? Oh yes, there's um this is Fog of War. To my understanding, this is Fog of War. This is just what our intelligence shows, is my understanding. Yeah, Fog of War. Oh yes, yes, Fog of War. I I believe Fog of War is enabled. Um so we're this is what my understanding is my intelligence is telling me. But maybe we're not. Um, you don't need to use ground support when you're very high odds for the attack. It's just wasted. Better save it for some air support. Um, stronger. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, press the X switch. X. Um, okay, ground support on, off. Okay. I don't know that I have any units assigned to ground support right now. Air units, that is. Um, like I said, I set it all up um, as AI, but we can take that off. And you're right, we really don't need much. Okay. Um, I'm going to come up here. that headquarters back and we'll use that to get to there now what I'm going to do
do with this here? thing and routed hopefully with it being cut off it won't have retreated anywhere but maybe it retreated up here I'm not sure okay that will be the better not good enough there but what we can do here is back to there. Nice. Getting to there is worth it. Ah, hello. Apachika, how you doing? Man, what is, um... This, this game takes, this, um, hello, um, Marin Rolling. Um, this game takes a lot to truly, to truly learn. Um, and I'm going to say I don't truly know the game to that level. I... Oh, I don't know. I have 20 hours in the game, maybe, or something like that. So I don't count myself as an expert. But this game is detailed. And like I was saying before, we can like click this unit and we can get here. This unit is down to, you know, is defined down to its armored cars, its various howitzers, bicycle recon squad. So it's, it's detailed and then managing... Um, you know, resupply, managing the air. It's, it's, if you're looking for a detailed game, this can be it. But if you're looking for a more simple game, uh, I would go with something like, um, if you're looking for grand strategy, I would go, you know, Strategic Command World War II or War Plan. I love both of those games. Or if you're looking for more operational type levels, I would go Panzer Corps 1 or 2 or Order of Battle um, if you're looking for something a little more simplified. Um, so I don't want somebody to get the wrong game for them. And what's but always believe that the Germans should have driven north and south in the center while going was easy. But when resistance stiffened, focus, focus uh, between choosing Archangel route for Western aid and the south, the Caucasus oil fields may have been taken time during nighttime logistically single opportunity Germany had fundamentally changed the entire dynamic of war not just the Eastern Front but also the Western and North Africa the whole enchilada yes now um yeah that's sort of what I'm saying is that very well could be the um, abilities to to do that just watched a video from this channel combat mission shock force 2 did you ever play um order of battle world war 2 oh yes i played a lot of order of battle world war 2 um there was some of this on this channel and hi everyone those that are showing up here i'm gamer 1745 streaming here for slithering tv there are many of us who stream here so if you're new please give this channel a follow um we play various games from both slithering and matrix here um, it's their their company's channel, but I also have a YouTube channel. If you want to follow that, just open a new window, where I do a lot of historical gaming and I talk, you know, historical talks while playing them. This is sort of my thing, 
And on the weekends, I also stream for myself on my Twitch channel. So if you guys want to um, follow that as well. Hey, and thank you for following. So yes. Um, so yeah, follow this channel. There's a like a DOS tactic was on earlier today on this channel. Um, the VODs are, of course, up as long as they are. If you want to catch those, there's a lot of good stuff here. A lot of good people playing. What's the little black ribbon in the corner of the Soviet? Oh, these are the routed units. These are the ones that have routed back. So um, this mechanized um, brigade or whatever it is had got hit by this division earlier, and it's um, fallen back to here. So that's so that's what you're seeing. Those are routed units. Um, basically, if um, if you get near them, they'll just keep falling back or whatever. We're, we're getting into coming up with our attacks here. Now, like I say, we want to try to move units from the rear to the front first. So we're going to move the Polizei SS Division, made up of policemen that... Um, I forget the exact year, but um, the SS under Himmler takes over all of the German police. Not all the police are members of the SS, but all the police are under SS control. During the Third Reich period, the police in Germany get reorganized. They're before the, the, the Nazis come into power. There's all kinds of jurisdictions for the police. Um, I don't, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, but it all gets um, eventually under a, the, under the, the Nazis gets under the SS and there is a, um, making it all the same type of organization up and down um, the chains of command uh, and all organ, organized under it. So all, and so they have generals in the police. So all police generals are full members of the SS. So the SS is at the high level fully controlling the police, but the policemen are not. Now, um, before the start of the war, the SS want more military units in what is becoming the Waffen SS. So they um, recruit a bunch of the policemen that had military experience to form the Polizei Division that eventually becomes an SS division as well. Um, is this the start of a new series? Uh, hello, um, NY Copulus. Um, not really. This um, is today's stream. We're showing this off because we're getting this out on more formats. Creepy how fast government systems can change. Oh, yes, and people's mind get... Absolutely. We're not going to go political here, but yeah, it happened fast with the Soviet Union. So we have this division. It's 11 to... Mm. 23, that's better. A deliberate attack, because I'd rather have the attack succeed than attack and have to attack again. That should succeed, right. Okay, so this division here, we're going to come right like that. Okay, like I say, we are doing our best to encircle units here, bringing up rear units first. Right. Now we're going to move back down to the south. The Sicker Heinz Dienst, the Reich Security Office, and even the Abwehr German military eventually came under the Sicker Heinz Dienst as well as the Kipro and Gestapo. Yeah, well, eventually, so, yeah, the Abwehr at the very end of the the war basically is my understanding, and it's it, the SS um, is a deep topic. There's all kinds of stuff going on there. Most assuredly, I always admire people who play these games. I new to this game it was always exciting to play and learn but yeah it takes some time to learn the tricks still amazing experience yeah and um quite honestly um uh, well i'll either uh, i'll use his twitter name greg the artist who is a really good um uh 
artist who paints, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, models uh, or models as well as, um, you know, war games figures, you know, whether they be knights or, um, you know, World War II combat, you know, groups, you know, things you put out on, on the board. Really great. A friend of mine in England. He's helped me a lot to learn this game as well as um, just watching YouTube videos um, has helped a lot in learning this. So I would recommend doing something like that as well for you. So we're moving this guy up here. Because I'm trying to encircle these guys to keep them from retreating out. These are all HQs. We got that in the back. Then he's going to move up here in a bit. Okay, I think we've got these guys fairly well. Bottled in here. I've had enough experience here that okay I don't want to use the six the 269th so let's get rid of the 269th from this stack there we go I just want to blast it routed by gone push back which it may be the third main security office the right maybe that's why we are that's why we're here well thank you having this much um, scale naval warfare could be overwhelming but always wondered yeah Okay, so we pushed that there. Now what we're going to do with this division here is come here, look at that, and let's see if we can also... Oh no, I just want to remove that from the stack. No, okay, come on. No, okay, whoa. Well, how did I get more divisions there? Here. But now what I want, I want the 21st and the 11th. So get rid of these. Okay, I'm gonna hope they're routed. Okay, so we've hit them hard, very hard. Deliberate attack, two to one. We're going to take the four to one.
have to remember to keep moving up some of these HQs. You have a max stacking limit of... of three per hex of anything. You can see he's already out of command and control range and I should have moved him up. You gotta sort of try to keep on that. I'm not great with it. Again, he's moved out of command and control range. Now he's back in. So he can come up to here and at least secure the area so it's under our control. He's switching on, on from battle to battle. Yes, um, ground support, yeah, it can be. And I'm trying to concentrate on talking with you guys and whatnot while playing this. So I'm not playing as well, but um, Beam Slam's advice is very correct. And we do want support on our flanks. So we're moving up units like that as well. That HQ is going to retreat back to there, it looked like. you can see that we're coming in here now again the goal is Riga this turn and now we're using the Totenkopf I didn't do a deliberate attack because I thought I had enough strength and I wanted to keep as much momentum going as possible. That obviously has more than enough strength. The force is retreated. Now we can come there, we can come here. Oh well, again remember to bring up HQs. Let's get the HQ up here. Von Monstein's core. Let's move this. And if you notice, other than the Totenkopf, which is motorized, I haven't touched any of my motorized forces yet. Hulk smash, yes, token cough, evil, evil division under very, very evil people. Oh yeah. Um. Okay, what I think we're gonna do here is come up here, push these guys aside here. So now we've cut off the Curlin Peninsula there. And yes, they have greater defense with that one unit. Um, That's fine, because that's where we were going in that direction anyways, but I didn't mean to. You can look, okay, so his units are right around here. This HQ, yeah, we already moved him up. Okay, now here, I don't wanna, don't want that. Don't think I just want this.
Okay, we should get them a little closer. Because you notice they turn blue, that is the sort of ideal there. Color for um, connections. Now let's yeah, let's hit um, X again as that okay, so sixteen to fourteen if we were doing a deliberate attack. It'd be 32 to 14. That is probably good enough. But like I say, I've sort of kind of learned I'm looking for one of these units back here. We can move you up to here, I guess. And the HQ up. Yeah, it's too far back for those, but that's fine. And we're going to unselect that. Yeah, get your HQ up closer. There we go. Now that will be, in my opinion, a for sure victory. Yes. And I would rather have overused the units and get the for sure victory as opposed to hit them again and hit them again and hit them again. Okay, we're going to turn the ground support off. And do any of these guys? No, they can't even. Oh, well, they can't get across the river. Eh, sort of anticipated that. So now we've actually got Riga. and supplies away from the enemy force. Protected, there we go. Now, I do want to leave something in Riga itself. And I think it's going to have to be an armored division, unfortunately. Their flanks are moderately well taken care of. So yeah, this armor division, the 8th Panzers gets to have a holiday in Riga. Oh, well, wait a minute, man, are these guys, no, they can't quite make it there, let's... Yeah, it may be a waste, maybe I should have moved him um, to better advance rapidly against the enemy. Okay, get some of these HQs a little further forward. What you want to do with this unit here is mm, repair the railways. Repair rail and hex, yes, cost one movement point. So we want to do that. And so we're going to come along here and then we're going to 
keep doing this. And we can't do that here, but so we've got this main railway repaired up to here right now. And um, like I say, I don't know that that's going to be much of an issue with this scenario it might be because quite honestly i've never I, i've fiddled around with the start of this but i've never fully played out this scenario um but it will be in a serious game definitely an issue okay now we've talked a bit about um 